Hi, Reading community. We'd like to take this chance to share out some of the great things happening across our district this week and also share some updates. So starting with the updates. So from September 15th to October 15th, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month has been celebrated here across the Reading Public Schools. Uh, some of the ways that I have personally seen uh, Hispanic Heritage Month celebrated in our schools is through uh, elevating texts with Hispanic authors, uh, protagonists, and characters, uh, through celebrating some of the traditions and culture from our Hispanic communities, and also recognizing some of the great Hispanic leaders uh, in both our country and our own Reading community. So this work is critical not only during these special months, but at all times, uh, and making sure that all of our staff, students, and families feel valued, feel welcome, and feel seen across RPS. So thank you everyone. A special shout out to our Hispanic and Latinx students, staff, families, and educators. Also would like to take this chance to speak a little bit about COVID testing. Um, so over the, uh, the past month and a half since the start of school, we have really focused on prioritizing symptomatic testing as ways to keep our students in school and the test and stay program. So there's a little bit of data on the test and stay program. We have had 195 close contacts so far during the start of the school year, which has meant that we have done 717 Binax now uh, antigen tests, all which have been negative, um, you know, sort of in response to the test and stay. Uh, we're really thankful to all of our nurses for their work in the test and stay program, which has allowed us to keep students out of the traditional quarantine program and out of school and in school learning. Uh, so a huge thank you to our school nurses for their work with test and stay. Also like to give an update around pool testing. So we know that pool testing is another uh, mitigation strategy that we have uh, to make sure that we limit transmission in our schools. Uh, last week we offered uh, pool testing for our staff who work in our high needs programs. This week we opened up pool testing to all of our staff members who were, who were interested. And then this uh, next week we plan on offering pool testing to our, our students particularly those who are not vaccinated uh, as recommended per DESI and DPH. So to roll this out, we will host a uh, pool testing site at Killam Elementary on October 22nd from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. Um, so again, this is open to members across our uh, RPS community. We will share more details as they come around, you know, how can families provide consent, you know, how we provide access for all students, particularly some of our students in our extended day programs, so while that information will come, we wanted to again share out that save the date for anyone who is interested to, uh, for pool testing to start, which we will now do sort of at a single site at Killam Elementary uh, at 1.30 to 3.30 on October 22nd. And a couple of pieces just to follow up on that. First, um, that this is something that we know is, uh, is open to students across different schools, even though it will just be housed at Killam. We decided to make this choice to just uh, limit the operational demand on having it across all of our different school sites uh, throughout the day. This is something we plan to offer weekly moving forward, uh, but we are viewing the 1022 date as a pilot to start to work through some of the things uh, that we you know realize maybe no, don't work so well that we can do better moving forward. Also, uh, as you know, uh, we recently shared uh, with families our uh, some information related to MCAS. Uh, so MCAS uh, information has been publicly shared around our uh, school and district performance and also families, uh, if they have not received, will be receiving shortly uh, individual school reports from, uh, from DESE. I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Hardy who's going to speak in a little bit more detail about uh, MCAS testing and some of the results. Thank you, Dr. Milicheski. As you may know, uh, MCAS results from spring 2021 were recently released to the public. And since that has happened, the central office team and our district leaders have spent some time analyzing our results and determining what our next steps are in order to set really high expectations for learning for all of our students and to make sure that our instruction is meeting the needs of each and every student here in the Reading Public Schools. We've also spent some time thinking about the context in which um, the testing happened last year. Uh, as you may remember, in March 2020, there was an abrupt closure school to schools and a shift to remote learning. The 2021 school year featured a shift to hybrid instruction, which is a, was a new model of instruction for our students, staff, and our families. Um, the 2021 school year also featured many shifts in instructional practices, and so it was a different year. 
we here at the Reading Public Schools uh, shifted to focus on foundational standards and understandings that our students needed. So those are things we're keeping in mind regarding the context as we analyze the MCAS results. One other little piece of information to share too is that the test did take a different format in spring 2021. We saw that students only took one session where they usually take two. And so the results um, reflect that, that difference. The other change is that the timelines for administration were different. So those tests were occurring where they don't typically occur. So based on all of that and looking at our results, uh, we as a district team were able to share out with school committee uh, some of the areas we believe need further investigation and some of the action steps that we're gonna take based on these results. Again, our goal is to set exceptionally high standards here in the Reading Public Schools and to make sure that each and every student has his or her needs met. If you want to hear, those, hear those, that report in detail, you can go back and view the school committee meeting. Or another spot, if you are curious and want to dig into some of the MCAS data, is the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education website. Their school and district profile pages has all of the public release data there too. Thank you. Also like to um, point out that for an upcoming, make everyone aware of an upcoming opportunity through CPAC, which is the uh, uh, workshop around basic rights, understanding the IEP, and it's a free virtual workshop for parents and professionals. Uh, this will be held on October 19th uh, at 7 p.m. So thank you for CPAC for running this important opportunity for our, for our community. I'd like to shift into talking to, through some shout outs for the week. First, we'd like to shout out the entire Killam community. So our uh, administrative leadership team, myself and our two assistant superintendents, Dr. Styes and Dr. Heidi Hardy, had the opportunity to spend a full day at Killam uh, on Tuesday. So you'll see here a video from the staff that shows some of just the, the fun and excitement in the Killam community. This was a video of the staff members kicking off the year playing a fun game of Hungry Hippos. Um, but we'd like to share a few of the things that stuck out to us as an administrative leadership team around uh, what we saw at Killam. First is we could sense right away just the community feel when you walk in to Killam. As one uh, parent said, our school's greatest strength is to connect to each student as an individual, academically and social and emotionally, and providing every child with what they need to be successful. And you can see, you can feel, and you can hear that when you are in the school community, that is really a school that wraps their arms around every child individually. Uh, also, uh, we noticed what stuck out to us was just the level of engaging practices. So this led to students you know, being on task and learning and feeling really excited and enthusiastic about what they're learning. And we're also really impressed with the level of student talk all the way from you know, pre-K uh, all the way up through fifth grade where students were required to explain their thinking both in writing and verbally uh, with, the whole, with their whole class and with their peers. So here, check out a video from Alex and Keen uh, as they explain their mathematical thinking. Three sandwiches, right, and two people. So each person gets one sandwich, and then there's one sandwich left over. So then you split it in half, to, so it could be 0 0.5, and then if you think so each person gets one, Wait, no. One in one. One in one half of a sandwich. Okay, so I had, I didn't finish it. I'd like to transition into uh, one last shout out and that goes out to our district OTs, our di district occupational therapists, for all the work that they've been doing to support students across the district. Uh, throughout the year, they've been sending periodic updates of just different tips and strategies that staff members can use to effectively uh, support their students. You'll see here some photos. These come from uh, Ms. Goldner and Ms. Boyages uh, that give some tips around pencil grip, right? And how can, how can we support students to be more efficient uh, and avoid having some of that, the, how laborious it can be to hold a pencil with sort of an inefficient grip. Uh, so this is a tip that uh, they've shared out with the entire community that I think is something that is helpful to all staff members and it particularly has an uh, impact on all students. So thank you to OTs for their commitment uh, to supporting all of our staff and all the students across our district. We hope everyone had a great week uh, and we look forward to seeing everyone next week. Go Rockets!